Greetings to everyone out there in the No DQ Galaxy. Welcome to the No DQ predictions video for WWE SummerSlam 2019. I am being joined by the No DQ panel, Team No DQ. First up, we have TJS. TJS, how are you feeling about SummerSlam on a scale from 1 to 10? You know, um, this is one of those pay-per-views where I feel like it's usually better than WrestleMania. Um, and you know how much they hype up WrestleMania and everything. So, you know, I, I'll give this show like an 8, 7, 8 between there. Um, I mean, even if you go into this with low expectations, and it should deliver. Because I, I don't think there's any match on this card that I'm just like, oh, not that. Because we're not getting Miz versus Ziggler. So I, I'm happy. I got nothing to complain about. I think this should be a fairly good show. I'm being optimistic about it. So there you go. All right, Big G, 1 to 10. How are you feeling? Um, uh, Well, unfortunately, I'm not going to be there live with you guys this coming weekend in Toronto. So I'm going to have to give it a 6 out of 10. We'll mm -hmm. see how uh, I usually have low expectations going into, you know, the pay-per-views nowadays. And then when I do watch, I'm like, okay, wow, it's exceeded my expectation. Uh, Rob, how, what about you, buddy? How are you not excited? I am 10 out of 10. Anything with Trish Stratus where you're going to get some Stratus faction is amazing. I'm looking forward to it. I think there's there's not as much hype going into this one as some of the other ones, which means by history, it's probably going to be a great show. All the ones that fly under the radar like that turn out to be better than anticipated. So I'm stoked for it. I can't wait. All right. Well, I am looking forward to going to Toronto to meet up with everybody. Of course, we have the No DQ meetup. No DQ's big meetup for 2019. Go over to nodq.com slash Toronto for more on that. It'll be fun to do the live recaps after the show being there in person. Going to be a really great weekend. Looking forward to meeting up with everybody. So because of that, my excitement level is maybe a little bit higher than it normally would be. I'm going to go like seven or eight. I think if I wasn't going to be there in person, I'd maybe go with like a five. Uh, to me, this isn't a very strong summer sun card, but I think it'll be solid. As of right now, we have 10 matches, and I'm hoping it stays at 10, but I would not be shocked if we get one or two matches added, and we'll talk more about that here in a few minutes. Let's go ahead and give our predictions for the 10 matches that are official as of this video. First up, we have the Cruiserweight Championship match, Drew Gulak. Virtue's favorite wrestler versus One Lorcan. So, Big G, tell us about what's going on here with 205 Live. What do you think about this match, and do you think we're going to see a new champion? Um, well, it's Oni Lorcan, and <laughs> I really haven't been paying attention to 205 Live, but we all know Gulak has been champion since Extreme Rules, or Stomping Grounds, I should say. So... And Oni Lorcan, he's a very good wrestler. You know, he's performed in NXT for a while now with Danny Birch. But I'm going to go with Gulak retaining the title here. All right. Well, I agree with you. I'm going to say Gulak retains. No reason for him to lose the title this soon. TJS? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. And uh, as far as, like, the 205 Live story goes, um, so they have this really big problem where they don't really, like, no way to determine a number one contender so they just throw out like six pack challenges or fatal four-way matches which is how only lorkin got this opportunity is a six pack challenge um and there were people in this match that didn't belong like davari who's lost to oni by the way um gallagher i mean i like gallagher but he just lost to chad gable twice chad gable wasn't in this match like the booking doesn't make sense, um, but anyway, yeah, I think that Gulak's going to retain. Rob? Gulak retains. This guy is fire. I think he's the future of this division, and if he wasn't there, I wouldn't care about this match at all. He puts on a good show. He's great on the stick. I don't think it's time for him to drop it. I'm going to go with the status quo. I agree with all of you. All right, so, so far, we are unanimous. All right, let's move on to the next match here and see if we can stay unanimous. We have Dolph Ziggler versus Bill Goldberg, the man. Goldberg coming back to redeem himself from Super Showdown. Now, I think we'll go through this pretty quickly. I expect it to be three-minute squash match. I think it's going to be a classic Goldberg-WCW match. Ziggler will get maybe a couple moves of offense. Then it's going to be Spear, Jackhammer, 
Goldberg wins. Uh, anybody that's want to give a different opinion, Robbie, what do you think? This is going to be a squash. They at least gave Goldberg someone that he can perform the jackhammer on, which is a great sign that that is going to be the end of this match. I agree with you. Three minutes or less. I would go two minutes. I think enough time for him to get that spear, pick him up for one jackhammer, and then they're going to have a big celebration. Hopefully he's not shirtless with his son and an uncomfortable thing again, but that's my pick. Bill Goldberg all the way. All right, TJS. Well, it's a shame this wasn't Shawn Michaels versus Ziggler, but, um, you know, I can't wait to see Ziggler sell that spear. It's going to be really good. Like you guys said, complete and total squash match. Goldberg's winning it, and, uh, you know, old Whisker Biscuit is going to take the W, redeem himself, and that's all i got to say about that, Big G. Yeah, uh, nothing else to say, you know. Goldberg's going to come out. He might hit two or three spears and then a jackhammer. And then the one, two, three. So about three minutes or less for the match. Absolutely. All right. Well, we got through that very quickly, and we are still unanimous. I'm thinking we should do a tiebreaker here and give a time of the match. And it's not like who's the closest without going over. It's whoever's the closest to the actual time. I think we'll do that as a, a tiebreaker. So Noah Foster, if you're watching this, uh, put that in there as the tiebreaker. I'm going to say the match will be two minutes and 35 seconds. Robbie? You know, I'm going to say just over three minutes. We'll say three minutes and 15 seconds. All right, TJS? I'm going to say a minute and 11 seconds. One minute, 11 seconds. All right, Big G? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm writing everybody's time down here. <laughs> okay. Um, um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a Price is Right uh, thing on Aaron. I'm going to go 2.36. Okay, uh, fair enough. So it's just... Whoever's the closest, so if it's 234, then I would win. Yeah. Because I would be closer. If it's 237, you would win. All right. So moving on here, we have a match that I'm sure Robbie is very excited for. Uh, Trish Stratus, puppies, versus right. the queen of all eras, Charlotte Flair in the singles match. Build up to me was not really as good as I would have liked, but... It's still a big match. It's in Toronto. I think Trish will get a great reaction. Now, the question is, will Trish win in her hometown or not? Um, this is a tough one for me to call, although I would lean towards Charlotte winning and getting the victory because she's the current star, and traditionally the new star beats the old star. Uh, but I, I would not be shocked if Trish did pull off a victory in her home country so anything's possible here i'm curious to know what you guys think i'm gonna go with charlotte but i'm i'm very torn with this one uh tgs let's start with you <clears throat> well let me just say <clears throat> i think that charlotte has used us many van joke way too many times the whole oh god make, j making jokes about trish being a mother like that's a milf so stop just constantly berating her for that anyway i do not see trish tap trish tapping out so if we're going to talk about trish stratus yes she is going to win this match and what i think is going to happen with that the way that that's going to end just for some context to this because everyone thinks charlotte's going to win this match is i think she is going to get the upper hand and whoever her next opponent is going to be is going to cost her the match. I think there's going to be some kind of run in and it's going to be a feel good moment in Canada with the hometown hero standing tall at the end. She may get beat up. It's going to be a game Charlotte Flair probably getting the beat down on Trish after the match. But I think when it's all said and done, uh, Trish is going to win this match. There's going to be interference to set up Charlotte's next feud and she'll get the rub just by being in the ring with Trish Stratus. All right. Fair enough. Big G. Well, I am excited for this match because I do love me some stratisfaction. And I'm going to agree with Robbie here. And I think Trish is going to get the win and get the feel-good moment there in Toronto. And if anybody, bouncing off of Robbie, if anybody did interfere, you know, against him in that match, possibly Sasha Banks and have Sasha and Charlotte feud again and get Sasha back in the mix. Huh. Interesting theory there if WWE wanted to go down that route, of course. But yeah. I, I feel like it's going to be a clean finish, but okay. we'll see. Anything's possible. We could so have another another Canadian screw job. Although right. well, that could happen in another match on this. Yeah. Time. So, wait, do you think Charlotte's or do you think Trish is going to tap out, Aaron? You think she's going to like straight up tap? 
No, I think Charlotte, okay. Charlotte will just win with a pinfall. Okay, okay. But again, I would not be shocked if Trish pulls off the victory. This is one of the matches that I feel can go either way. It's a coin flip. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty much. All right, so next up we have AJ Styles defending the United States Championship against Ricochet. Now, this title has been going back and forth. It's been flip-flopping like a hot potato. Big G, I want to start with you on this one. Do you think Ricochet is going to win back the title, or do you think the OC will help AJ retain the title? What do you think is going to happen here? Uh, this will be a good match. I mean, they had a good match at Extreme Rules, I believe, where AJ won the title from Ricochet. And I think they're going to keep the title on AJ Styles for a good while, have him in a lengthy reign with the U.S. title. And I yes, I think the OC will interfere somehow and help AJ retain. Good good prediction there. Robbie? Uh, uh, yeah, I agree with that. I think, I think it's too soon to take any of the belts off anyone in the OC. I think they're trying to build them up as a villainous, strong faction. And to give the belt to Ricochet at this point, I think it's a waste because I don't really think the guy needs it. He gets a large prop from the crowd. He doesn't need this title. I think AJ doesn't need it, but the club as a whole does. So I think he retains. All right. And uh, TJS? Yeah, they have, they're strapping the rocket to the OC's ass, folks. Um, um, yeah, they gave Gallows the face paint again. They just beat the New Day on Raw. Like, these guys ain't losing for a while. Um, so, yeah, I think that AJ is going to win it here. And I'm kind of worried that this is going to be Ricochet. Uh, I think he's going to get lost in the mix now because I, I don't see where he goes from here. But, I mean, it, it'll be a great match like you guys said. We'll see what happens. But, yeah, I think AJ is going to retain. Now, I'm feeling like, keep in mind, everybody, that when we do the predictions for title matches, that it's who is going to retain not necessarily who's going to win. So for title matches, we're predicting who retains. Um, I feel like Ricochet may win this match by DQ or something like that, where he'll be on the verge of winning and OC will run in for a DQ. And knowing WWE, they always like to do like these lame DQ finishes on pay-per-view. I think this is going to be that match where Ricochet will be on the verge of, of victory, and that's when OC will interfere, causing a DQ. Either that or AJ just flats out defeats him, which... I, I think would be fine. I know some people would not like that, but I think you need to build up the U.S. champion at this point. I think regardless of the case, AJ will retain the championship. All right. Now, here's another match where I'm curious to see if, if this is unanimous or not. We have Finn Balor versus the Fiend Bray Wyatt. Now, Finn Balor is reportedly going to be taking some time off after SummerSlam. Bray Wyatt's having his first match as this new character. Is there any chance that Bray Wyatt loses this? Robbie, I want to start with you. No, The Fiend is the best part of WWE right now. And I'm curious, is is it going to be Finn Balor or is it going to be The Demon? They haven't really said anything about that, right? No. Right. Okay, so this is where I think happens. I think this is an easy... Bray Wyatt, the, the Fiend Bray Wyatt victory lead up to hurt him and lead up to maybe a Fiend versus Demon match down the road when he comes back from his time off. But as it stands now, Bray Wyatt is not going to lose this match. This is just to set up something for a future match down the road at another big show where you can have Demon and Fiend and sell tickets. But yeah, Bray Wyatt all the way. All right, TJS. Yeah, that's a good point about, uh, you know, maybe doing the Demon match later on. Um, I don't know. I just feel like Finn is going to look very dumb if he doesn't bring out the demon for this match. Like the he Royal Rumble. Dumb a lot. Yeah, that that's true. Um, like the Royal Rumble, he didn't bring out the demon and out. And if he doesn't bring out the demon here, it's just like this would be awesome because this is like the fantasy part of wrestling where you'd have like the two mythical creatures colliding, which I think is entertaining as hell. So yeah. Um, but I feel like if Finn was going to be the demon, they wouldn't tell us. Like, we'll just see, like, the red lights in the arena. It's like, oh, here comes the demon. Um, either way, this is going to be an interesting match, I think. Um, overall, though, I'm going to say that the Fiend here. Um, and do you guys like him using the Mandible Claw as a finisher? Because 
I'm kind of torn here. Like, I like the mandible claw as a move, but it kind of it makes it difficult for me to believe that it actually hurts the guy because the guy has all of his limbs free. Can't he just fight out of the move or something? No, I think it's a great move, and and who else does it? And it fits his character well. I I, I really really enjoy it. And I know Aaron. I think you said something before. I would kind of like to see him steal moves from legends he beats and different things like that. That could be neat, but. I love the Mandible Claw. I've always been a big fan of it, and I'm glad it's back. Yeah, I, I mean, um, it's a lot better than Sister Abigail. The yes. kiss of death, whatever, yeah. But yeah, brave. All right, Big G? Absolutely, the Fiend is going to win this. Um, like TJ said, they could wait until SummerSlam to bring out the Demon, but I like Robbie's point, too, you know, have this build up to an even bigger match, maybe at Survivor Series. Um... I think Bray Wyatt is going to win within at least a fi- within five minutes. Balor's going to hit his couple moves. Uh, the Fiend is going to like stop him, put the mandible claw on him, and that's it. All right. Well, I'm also going with Bray Wyatt to win the match. I, I don't see it. I mean, I guess WWE could swerve people and do a DQ, but nah, I think Bray Wyatt's going to win. Balor's taking some time off. Makes sense for Bray to get the win here. I and, hope uh, the- That'll be that. I hope the fiend gets an entrance. I hope we don't just get the appear when the lights go off thing. I hope we get a full blown entrance. I think that's going to be epic. Yeah, I mean, hopefully he has something special, you know, to to live up to the hype. You know, there's all this talk about what's his new entrance going to be like and whatnot. I hope they got something good, but we'll see. All right, moving on here, we have Kevin Owens versus the best in the world, Shane McMahon. If Kevin Owens loses, he will quit WWE. Uh, this this feud has been going on for a while. If you want to include the previous feud between them from, from uh, last year or two years ago, whenever it was, uh, these guys have been feuding back and forth now for a while. Only this time, Kevin Owens is the babyface and Shane is the heel. I would presume Kevin Owens is going to beat Shane. I, I don't see Owens quitting, so him losing just doesn't make any sense to me. And I think Shane is probably going to be phased out as a TV character. I hope so, at least. I'm going to go ahead and say Kevin Owens wins this. Big G, what do you think? Yeah, I'm going to go with KO to win, too. And I'm sure since McIntyre and Elias don't have a match on this card, they'll somehow try to interfere in this match, and Owens will, you know, beat them down, and then he'll get the win over Shane McMahon with the stunner. All right, TJS. <sighs> well, something tells me that we're going to get Elias versus Chad Gable on the kickoff. Since we got the little backstage segment, I'm, I am I can see it happening. Um, But, yeah, I think that this should be a good match. I think Shane McMahon actually isn't that bad in the ring. I mean, he's not a technical master, uh, but he's not the best in the world or anything like that. Um, He's good, though. I I kind of enjoy his matches because when a McMahon is in a match, you know it's going to be high profile, like we've said before, because Vince is not going to let his son perform in a bad match. Um, And I like the Hell in a Cell match they had, so should be pretty good. Um, it would be interesting if you had Sammy play a role in this match like he did in the last one, but except this time he helps Shane and retires his best friend who he's been living in the shadow of. But we don't do creative things like that. So yeah, Kevin's going to win with the stunner. I like the babyface character, um, and hopefully it's upwards from here for Owens. Robbie? There is no question in my mind the winner of this match will be Stone Cold Kevin Punk. It's hands down exactly going to go down that way. My question is, if we're all going to be unanimous on this, how many Stone Cold or KO stunners, what are you going to call it? How many KO stunners will put this away? I, I expect at least two on Shane and then one on each of his lackeys for a total of four KO stunners before this match is over. Uh, so do you guys think that's what they're doing? They're trying to recreate the Vince versus Austin thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, yeah. Just yeah. To expect Austin to call for, or expect for some Steve Weiser, start cracking them. He's going to ride a four-wheeler down to the ring. <laughs> what do Canadians drink? Milk. Maple syrup. <laughs> so busting out his maple <laughs> syrup. Imagine him, like, bashing, like, two things of, like, syrup together, and it's just like, ugh. Well, then hey. he'd be right in line with the new day. <laughs> 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 
That would be Kevin Owens thing to do, that's for sure. All right, so uh, moving on here, we have the WWE Championship match. We have Kofi Kingston, the pancake-slinging WWE Champion, defending against Randy Orton and Kofi Kingston, looking for his vindication at SummerSlam against the man that called him stupid a decade ago. All right, so TJS... Thoughts on the build-up to this match, and do you think the the title reign of Kofi Kingston, which has been quite lengthy up to this point, uh, not often we see a champion from WrestleMania all the way to SummerSlam, uh, at least in recent years. Do you think we're going to finally have a new WWE champion, or do you think Kofi Mania will live on? Well, um, let me just say that I think this match has one of the strongest builds because it's been so... Um, con- continuous i guess there's a lot of continuity here from those years ago and they're playing up orton like holding kofi back um they replayed the stupid clip too many times though like i'm getting tired of it. it's like okay we get it we get it. he was supposed to stay down for the punt so he gave him a stiff rko um but i think this match is gonna be really good uh and i figure kofi's gonna win it here um I think that um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if um, Randy won it because if he was going to win it anywhere, I think SummerSlam would be the place. That's where he won his first world title. Um, but I, I figure Kofi's going to pull it out here, and I think Kofi's going to hold that title probably the rest of the year. I'm surprised he won big. Um, Aaron, what do you think? I think that this one is quite tough to predict. Because I, I have this feeling Randy Orton might just win it. You know, with WWE moving uh, SmackDown to Fox in October, maybe Randy Orton being the champion might be a good idea because he has that name value. He can be on the promotional materials for Fox, you know, an established name uh, being on the first Fox show representing WWE as champion. Um, so, I mean, it could happen at the next pay-per-view, maybe not SummerSlam. Uh, so... I'm going to I'm going to go with Kofi retaining but it might not be so clear. It might be more of a controversial finish and they may do a rematch where Randy Orton wins the title and goes into Fox as the champion. But this one if Randy Orton wins the title I will not be shocked. But I am going to just say Kofi retains here just for the hell of it um, because because I could see this match and this feud potentially dragging out a little bit longer. Um Big G what do you think? Well, I'm going against the grain. I'm tired of Kofi as champion. I'm tired of him having pancakes stuffed in the belt, him throwing pancakes. I want a champion that I can get behind, and I'm getting behind Randy freaking Orton. Done. Robbie. Right. I agree with 100% of what Big G just said, except for the fact he's not going to drop the title at SummerSlam. Um, I'm sick of it. I don't care about this match. Th- this is actually probably wow. my least anticipated match on the card. I'm more excited for the, the cruiserweight title than I am this match because it's getting to the point now where Kofi's going to win. It's not going to be believable. I'm and I'm just I'm you could literally every video that I've on now. I just talk about I'm just so sick of Kofi Kingston and I don't even want to watch the match anymore. We know he's going to pull out some win. It's probably going to end in a DQ, and there's going to be no title change. That's my prediction for this. No title change. It stays on the boring champ. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, I, I'd love to see a title change here, but I, I don't think it's going to happen, at least on this show. Maybe next month, but not this show. Okay. So now we have the, the two women's championship matches. First up, we have for the SmackDown Women's Championship, we have... Bailey defending against Ember Moon. I I think Ember's great. I think she has some real potential, but I don't see her winning the the title. She's pretty much been an afterthought. It's like she's just a random opponent for Bailey, and I would be really surprised if Ember won the title. I'd I'd like to see it happen, but I I don't think it's going to happen. I think Bailey's going to win and move on to something else. What? I don't know, but I'm going with Bailey to retain. Uh, Robbie, let's start with you. What do you think? 
I agree. I, I think Bailey retains here. It's not Ember Moon's time quite yet. I think she's she's really close to that edge where she could be that next level. I just think she needs more time to develop some of her mic skills, some of her delivery, different things like that. She has a pretty cool entrance. She has a good look. She has a good finish. We just need to build her up more as a credible opponent. Now, with that said, I think this all eventually leads to Bailey versus Sasha at a big show. That's what I think it's going to be. But no, I think... Bailey again, like the last match. As much as I would like to see them move on from Bailey, Bailey will most likely retain. All right, Big G. Yeah, I'm gonna say Bailey retains. I like Ember Moon. Now here's the thing: I picked Shayna to retain on NXT the night before, but if she doesn't, I could see her coming up on SummerSlam after the match and choking out Bailey and having Shayna be the next challenger for or yeah the next challenger for bailey because i don't see sasha coming back anytime soon all right tjs well i think if shana chokes anyone out, i think it would be becky because she has more of a beef with becky than bailey mm -hmm. um anyway uh i think that ember like you guys said it, it's just it's a shame that she's been so underutilized she's like the cesaro of the women's division um <laughs> It's really sad to see, uh, sad to see. Like I said, uh, she was like a credible threat to Oscar once. Um, you guys remember Oscar? Um, but yeah, uh, they've really been been a lot edgier, a lot, um, you know, turned to the dark side a little more, more aggressive and everything. She's yeah. kind of moving away from the whole hugger gimmick. Um, that being said, I think that Bailey's gonna pick up the win here, and uh, we'll see what happens from there. All right. So, uh, yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like it's going to be a good night for Bailey, perhaps, unless we get some kind of swerve, which anything's possible in WWE, you know. That, that's why I feel like it's so tough to predict these pay-per-views sometimes, because even though something seems obvious, like WWE does throw curveballs at people every now and then, even if they really don't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to see Ember win, but, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. All right, so here's a match which I think might be a little bit more hard to predict. I mean, maybe not. Uh, Becky Lynch versus Natalia in a submission match for the Raw Women's Championship. Now, WWE is making a big deal about this being um, in Canada, Natalia's home country. Will Natalia tap out in Canada to Becky Lynch? Will it be Montreal? I mentioned earlier uh, there could be a Canadian screw job here. Uh, will we see that in this match? And it's going to be interesting to see the crowd reaction. Will the fans be behind Becky? Will they be behind, will they be behind Natalia? Will it be 50-50? Um, TGS, let's start with you on this one. Uh, do you think we're going to see a new champion, or do you think Natalia will tap out, or do you think she'll pass out? What do you think is going to happen here? Uh, okay. Um, well... First of all, I could totally see Natalia having Becky in the sharpshooter, and then they call for the bell. And it's like, oh, 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 like Becky didn't tap, but Natalia's the champion, like replicating the mantra. Um, Bret Hart's probably going to be at this, you know. They're, like you said, they're going to make a big deal out of this Canada thing. Um, and they've made Natalia look very strong going into this match. Um, they've really building up that sharpshooter. <sighs> I don't understand why they would make this a submission match if that wasn't going to play into it. Um, geez. Uh, for the, you know what? For the hell of it, I'm going to say that Natalia wins the title here. Just going to go out on a limb, going to say Natalia wins the title, and then Ronda Rousey like comes in also and celebrates with Natalia because they were training partners or whatever. Uh, I, I'm officially predicting another Canadian screw job. That's, I don't think Becky's actually going to tap. I think she'll either pass out or they'll call from the bell prematurely. Um, and yeah, um, or I could see them calling for the bell and then Becky gets up and she's like, wait, I didn't tap. And then Natalia rolls her up or something. Um, well, no, it's a submission match. So no, that couldn't happen. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to predict Natalia winning the title here. Big G. Um, Simple as this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Becky retain, and then possibly Ronda Rousey comes back either that night or on Monday night and, you know, says, I never lost at WrestleMania 35, I want my rematch, and that's the end of that. All right, well, 
I'm going to say Becky Lynch retains. Um, I think she's going to tap out Natalia. People are going to be pissed about it, maybe. Like, I feel Becky's going to get a lot of boos. I feel like Natalia is going to be the, the fan favorite here, but maybe it'll be 50 50. I think it'll be a really good atmosphere for the match. I think Becky's going to be champion until Ronda comes back. I mean, I don't see the point in Becky losing. If, if Ronda is planning to come back, which I would think she is, yeah. um, or Shayna Baszler gets called up, I think Becky's going to stay champion for the time being. I don't see her losing. And especially with the WWE 2K20, uh, Becky's on the cover of that. Yeah. I, I don't see her losing the title right now. So, yeah, Becky retains. Robbie, what, what do you think? I would rather shingle a roof in July than watch an Italian match. I just think I just don't care about her. I think she's boring. Her gimmick's terrible. This is going to be a simple match. I think Becky Lynch taps her out in seven minutes or less. She's probably going to get some booze, and then they're just going to move on. I don't see anything being added to it. You know, Ronda Rousey's at home trying to pop out some babies. She's trying to start her family. I think it's going to be well after WrestleMania before she returns. I think it's a straightforward match. I can't wait for it to be over because I do not want to see Natalia on my screen anymore. I know it's harsh, but that's how I feel. Hey, every time I hear that music, I'm like, oh, great. It's Natalia. it's not good. Like it's just, not. Her promos are akin to Shane McMahon's punches. I just can't. I can't and, do it. Ouch. And she, she does that thing where she cries all the time, and I'm just right. like, oh, God. How does she still have a job? Oh, that's right. The last name. She's a decent in-ring worker. It's just I can't stand her gimmick or her promos. Like she's a in, in the ring, she's a solid worker. I will give her that. It's just everything else outside of that 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 makes a WWE superstar. I just don't think she has it compared to other options on the roster. It's the she... damn cat ears that she wears. Didn't she used to have a, a farting gimmick, or am I thinking of Mickey James? No, she did. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was an interesting little part of this video. Let's see what people say in the comments. Leave a comment. Let us know what you thought about Robbie's opinion of Natalia. doesn't necessarily reflect the opinions of everybody else at NoDQ.com, or maybe it does. I don't know. All right. So main event time, Brock Lesnar defending the Universal Championship against the architect, Seth Rollins. Big G, do you think that after everything that Rollins has been through, I mean, he's really coming into this match as the underdog. He got beat down two weeks in a row. He's been made to look very weak against Brock Lesnar like he has no chance. Do you think Rollins will win? Rollins guaranteed victory on Raw, by the way. And usually in wrestling, when a babyface guarantees victory, it happens. Uh, so, Big G, what happens if Rollins doesn't win the title here? Is it going to ruin his character? I mean... What do you think is going to happen? Absolutely. So, before WrestleMania, he, before he won the title, they made him look strong against Brock Lesnar. Now they're making him look like an underdog. I don't know what the hell he was thinking yesterday showing up on Raw. He should have just stayed home, healed up his wounds, licked his wounds, and then showed up at SummerSlam being, you know, 100%. But no, he's got to show up with the steel chair, and uh, I don't know. Um, I like Seth Rollins, but they just put the title back on Brock, and they did it for a reason. And I don't know what that reason is, but I'm going with Brock to retain. Yes, money. There you go. All right, TGS, what do you think? <sighs> okay, so the only way I can see this ending, like, I, I don't see Seth, like, getting pinned. I think that they're going to stop the match because Seth is just beaten up so bad and the ref's going to be like, okay, this is going to be like that Randy Orton versus Brock match. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're going to have like Lesnar lay the elbows into Rollins where he's like pouring blood. Maybe not the blood, but I think that Rollins is going to be beat up so bad that they're going to just say, okay, that's enough. Like he, he can't finish the match. Um, You can have like... He, could, he just keeps putting his hand on the rope whenever Lesnar pins him or whatever. He'll just keep kicking out. He'll keep getting up. Or maybe Brock will get frustrated and start hitting him with the chair. It'll be a DQ. Either way, I think that Brock's walking out with the title. Uh, Aaron? I, I feel like Rollins has to win this because of the way this match has been booked. If Rollins doesn't win, to me, there's no going back for him. He just looks like a total loser if he, if he doesn't get the job done here. 
and he goes out there, guarantees victory, and then doesn't win it. Yeah, I, I think Rollins has to win the title back. But then what do you do with Brock Lesnar? What's next for him? I mean, is Lesnar going to go away again and win back the title again? I don't know. And I, I really don't care much about this match as a main event. Like, I think it'll be really good. These guys always deliver in the ring. I, I think it'll be a really solid match. But Rollins has to win. He, he, he really has to win. And then maybe we could see Lesnar turn face finally. I don't know. But Rollins... I. I I mean, Brock could win. Wouldn't shock me if he does win. But um, I'll go ahead and say Rollins. Robbie, what do you think? I, I think we know about as well as they do right now. I, from everything we've seen, Vince is going to rewrite this probably 20 minutes before it happens anyway, right? Um, right. I'm, I'm going to say Lesnar retains. I think this is a way to write Seth off for a little bit. He's been getting a lot of heat on social media. It's a way to kind of take him off TV, you know, make the fans miss him a little bit, maybe change him and then bring him back. Um, better than ever or whatever you want to say it. But I think he is not going to go down just for the one, two, three. I think Lesnar is going to hurt him and I expect blood and I expect to see Rollins written off for a few weeks, if not longer. All right. So that is SummerSlam 2019. And uh, we're not doing predictions for other matches that haven't been announced because, well, if they were that important, WWE would announce them on television. Twitter does not count. So if they announce Roman Reigns versus Eric Rowan, I don't care. We're not predicting it. So that's it for our predictions video. Let's go ahead and do our plugs. Robbie, let's start with you. You guys can follow me on Twitter with my new and improved Twitter handle at NoDQVice. So give me a follow on there. Let me know if you thought I was too harsh on Natalia. Give me your opinions on my opinions on Shane McMahon's punches. I would love to hear from you. And again, thank you, Aaron, for having me on today. Uh, what is your plug, Mr. Big G? Yes, nodq.com slash Big G. Take you to my Twitter page, nodq underscore Big G on Instagram, Jeff Health on Facebook, uh, nodq.com slash shirts. Everybody ha or new shirts are up and running and coffee cups and hats and whatnot. And the nodq.com super Ch champion shirt and TJS with his blank uh, shirt. TJS, go ahead, buddy. Take it away. Slash TJS takes you to my Facebook page, Twitter at nodq underscore TJS, PlayStation Network, Tyler Joseph Smith. Feel free to add me there. Feel free to follow me. Feel free to just add me everywhere and, uh, Let's talk art wrestling, other things. Uh, I don't care. Um, Aaron, take it home. All right. So nodq.com slash Toronto. You can RSVP for the NoDQ meetup in Toronto if you're going to be anywhere near the arena. Check it out. I thought I just saw a cat in the background, yes. Rob. That is my cat, Jade. Yeah, she likes to be on TV. Yes. Cat cameos. Always <laughs> approved on the NoDQ channel. Stay tuned to nodq.com for SummerSlam live coverage and thank you guys for watching the video leave your feedback we appreciate your support and viewership and we will see you guys next time